So today I will start with Yes, I'm going to start with the GeoGebra. Uh, let me. Okay. So basically, um, on GeoGebra, you could find some resources, uh, some free resources. Okay, if you look at the GeoGebra, or if you haven't tried even once to open, try to open. Uh, it's it's a really cool uh, website to uh, to go more details in graphing uh, in two dimensions, three dimensions. You can even do uh, tricks like a polar, make how to make a polar through a, a scratch from from this GeoGebra, and the important thing here, uh, most of the people here, they already contribute to give the resources for free. So you, you don't need to pay anything to, to look at these resources. So for the chapter 12, if you want to look more details in the picture or the graphs, because I think some graphs also in your textbook, uh, maybe it will be confusing if you cannot imagine how it looks like in three dimensions. So, my suggestion is to open this GeoGebra, uh, type in the quadric surfaces, and you can see there are a lot of um, uh, resources. So let's let's check check them out. Well, let's just check this one. Well, like. You can check uh, for each part. You can rotate the, the graphs. So this is the ellipsoid. You can also have from these resources, you can check the 2D projection for each axis. So which is, uh, I think it's really good. And actually you can also draw all of this by yourself. Uh, you, can, you can learn like from um, how to draw in GeoGebra. First, you need to set up the example here and then set up that this is all for uh, three, three axes for x, y, z. You can set up any equations. And for example, this is the, the ellipsoid here. Let's check another part. Maybe this one. Okay, now this is more complete, I think, because before we only see the ellipsoid, we have now uh, six. Okay, you have six um, quadric surface, the ellipsoid, which is the picture here, and you can even change the the constant. You can you can change the shape, um, and 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 also. All these things, is you can make it by yourself in, in this GeoGebra. This is the hyperbolate of one sheet. Hyperbolate of two sheet, like that, okay? So it has the hyperbola here. And if you rotate, it will be a circle there, or maybe an ellipse. Depends on the equations. And you can also draw a cone like that, elliptical cone. Yeah. And you can see this uh, parabola here with the ellipse. So it's elliptic paraboloid. You can change the constant if you want. Make it smaller, make it bigger in X and Y.
And this is the last part, the, the, the saddle. So this is the parabola. And here below is also parabola. Okay. And in the, if you see from the top here, we have hyperbola here and another hyperbola behind. Okay. That's what I'm trying to make in our last uh, courses. So if you want to uh, look at the uh, picture and try to, uh, to check the equations, you can do that in the GeoGebra. I think there's a lot of uh, options that you can choose. You can choose each one that's suitable for you. And this is the additional notes for uh, the courses. And now we're going back to our course. Okay, now this is the hyper, hyper, uh, hyperbolic parabola, the one that I showed before, the saddle. Okay. So it's the, the parabola here. You can trace to front and trace to behind. And this is parabola on the, on the, on the bottom here. And you can trace to the y positive and to y negative. Okay. And here's the hyperbola, and it's also the hyperbola. Okay. I, I hope you can see the, the picture. If you want to see more clear, go to GeoGebra and look for a uh, type in quadric surface, and you can, uh, you can see many options there. Just click any, 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 any resources that are suitable for you. Yeah, and it's precisely like a saddle in the in, in on a horse. Yeah, it's it's not like a horse, but yeah, a saddle. And the point in the in the, in the middle is called the saddle point here. Okay, here. This point is I think we will we will discuss in details in chapter fourteen the saddle point, but later. Okay, later. Okay, so we already uh, discussed until here. Now I add another uh, three uh, uh, examples that haven't yet uh, revealed. Okay, now we have uh, x squared, y squared, z squared, all with the square. But this is positive, positive, and negative. Okay, if you see this, the first thing, whenever you find any uh, quadric surfaces in, in, the, in equations, first is imagine one of the variables to be ignored. You will see here, you will see uh, y squared minus c squared, which is the hyperbola, right? You can ignore y, and you also see x squared minus z squared, which is also hyperbola, right? So hyperbola in y z and hyperbola in x z. And another is if we ignore the z, we will see x squared and y squared, which is the ellipse. Okay. Now uh, we can trace the uh, the equations. That's why I'm going just drawing directly from here. Okay. 
Now the x has four, meaning it's crossing the point two. So one, two, maybe two is here, two is here. And for y is crossing only one with that. So in X and Y, we have the ellipse. Let's draw the ellipse on when Z is zero. So let's trace. Okay. And XZ, let's draw XZ. Maybe use different color. And YZ, uh, maybe YZ is here. It's supposed to be like this. So you have um, the hyperbola on red and blue, and it will trace an ellipse shape it at the um, x y plane. So if we are breaking down this uh, equations, it will be uh, hyperbola. Hyperbola. And ellipse. And for ellipse, you can also think Okay, so from these three equations, we make uh, this drawing, the two hyperbola and one ellipse. We call this shape 
is a hyperboloid of one shape. Okay, another example. Uh, Now, similar equations, but the difference is on the signs, okay? Now you have negative x and negative z instead of two positive signs. So this have two negative signs and one positive, but the same x squared, y squared, z squared, okay? And you get the same, uh, you will get the, the hyperbola and then the ellipse. Now, this one, it is also hyperboloid, but different shape from the last one. So this will be, if we are going to trace, we'll have this, which is the hyperbola, right? And we will also have this. This is when z is zero. This is uh, when x is zero. But when y is equal k, any constant, we can con uh, arrange the form and we can uh, use it to rearrange into an ellipse. It's still an ellipse, okay? Still an ellipse. So we have an ellipse here. But the pictures is a little bit different. So, because of this ellipse, instead having a body like uh, like the one we are making here, we have like a long shape here, right? In the in the in the previous one, but now because of this ellipse, we will have uh, let's, let's try to draw this. So in Y is having two. So the ellipse is X Z. So it should be probably that. Let me draw the ellipse first. And then draw the hyperbola. The first hyperbola is on x, y, maybe here. And maybe here. And the other hyperbola is y and z. So there. Maybe. And 
I think this should be a little bit, uh, let me erase this first. Should be a little bit going to behind. Let me draw this. Yeah, so it's like uh, like a like a bowl, right? You see from like a bowl like that. So whenever you find um, this kind of equation, uh, and depends on which one is negative, it can be like that or here. So the one who has the axis, let's say this is on Y, right? Y is positive. So the one who has positive will be the axis will be the axis for, for this this uh, this cup, okay? And for this one, the one who has negative, it will be the, the axis here, okay? So for example, if you have x positive, y negative, z positive, so, so it will be y, so it will be here, okay? And for this, sections, you don't need to be uh, like drawing really good, really smooth, but as long as you can, uh, you can distinguish what kind of surface that you will make from here, that's already enough. And sketching the curve is uh, the more, uh, for example, maybe details, you don't need to be really details, but just make sure that uh, you, uh, uh, that I can see the ellipse, I can see the the hyperbola. That that's okay. But if it is not really clear what you are doing, or maybe you have trouble in your drawing, just make sure you name you name it. Okay, name uh, this part is the hyperbola. This part is the ellipse. Okay, if you are not good in drawing this. Okay? Okay, the last part is actually the a simple cone. Uh, it's called the elliptical cone, but let me just a uh, summary, make it summary for all the uh, surface. So summary. So first is the ellipsoid. The ellipsoid, it has this equation. So you have all plus and all will be ellipse in each plane. So all traces is ellipse. If A equal B equal C, it will be um, a sphere, not an ellipsoid. Of course, because the radius is the same. Number two is called the elliptic paraboloid, which means you have parabola and combined with ellipse. You will have something like this.
equations, you will get the equation uh, maybe from x squared. So you will have the linear one. This this is uh, z, the one that has linear equations to make the parabola. And horizontal trace. This is ellipse and vertical. Vertical trace is the parabola. And the linear one here, this indicate the axis. Which means how the, your, your picture will be. For example, if this is, for example, this is Z. But if this is, if it's Y, then you can just uh, adjust the picture to X, Y, or Z, okay? The one that is the uh, linear one. So it's called elliptic paraboloid. The third one is the hyperbolic uh, paraboloid. Okay, I hope you see this. This is the parabola here. There's another hyper, hyperbola there. Okay. And this is similar to the previous one. The difference is it is hyperbola. Hyperbola here. So horizontal trace is hyperbola, meaning horizontal or vertical. It, it depends on the axis. Okay? If the axis is like, for example, the, in this case, all axis is Z. And vertical traces is parabola. Okay. So vertical, like uh, this, okay, this parabola, right? If you look uh, in vertically, if you look horizontally, you only see this. Hyperbola here and hyperbola here, horizontal. Okay, horizontal. Okay. And four is. Um, let me write this is as an elliptical cone.
the equations is that is the equations Now you will have the line equation here and line equation here. So horizontal trace is ellipse. And vertical trace is So if I make x and y as a constant, this both of this will be hyperbola if k is not zero. But pairs of line if k is zero which means that you can trace this like an, a hyperbola like that. But the easy, the easy one to look at is just make it a zero so that you can draw the line. Okay. And that's the fourth, uh, the fifth, is hyperboloid of one sheet, the one that we draw before. That's the upper bullet of one sheet. The trace are ellipse. And the vertical trace are uh, hyperbola. And the symmetry is the one of who has negative sign. This is the axis here. And the last one 
is the hyperbola of two sheets. So we have six surface. It's similar to the previous the one sheet, but the difference is it has two signs and one positive. And the positive one will be the, the axis. And this will be So horizontal trace are ellipse. Ellipse. If so, if C is equal constant. So if K is greater than C, or K is less negative C. Because if in between this. In between of this, there will be no ellipse. Okay. And vertical traces are hyperbola. And these two minus signs indicate that this is the hyperbola of two sheets. But um, my point is, in this summary, uh, it's not remembering all these equations, all, okay? but how to trace the, the curve. Okay? That's, that's the most important thing, rather than uh, remembering. If you want to remember and memorize, that's OK. That's good. But instead of just memorize, you can, you can have um, how to make logic out of these surfaces. Okay? So first is. You have three, remove one, and you will see what kind of curve. Okay, and then imagine the other part you remove, the other part you remove, and you will see three parts, right? In x y plane, y z plane, and x z plane. So each part you have the curve. Okay? You have a curve, and from these three parts, try to combine, and you will see how it looks like. Okay? At least you now have six options. The ellipsoid, elliptic paraboloid, the hyperbolic paraboloid, the cone, the hyperboloid, okay? One sheet or two sheets. So only six, six available for the quartic surface, okay? And the typical questions in, the, in this section is probably you'll be given uh, equations and you need to make out like what kind of surface will it be? And maybe sketching the curve and maybe um yeah just i think just two 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 kind of question mostly the typical questions in this uh, surface identify this uh this surface um, sketch the surface and then the other one is you will have like maybe 
a random equation and you need, and you need to simplify that equation, make it into the surface. Okay. But uh, actually identify and sketch is the most uh, common questions in the uh, 12.6, okay. And that's, that's it, the 12.6, okay. So chapter 12, uh, done. Uh, we will go to chapter 13. And because chapter 13 is actually not too long, it's, it's quite short. So after we finish chapter 13, we will have another quiz, okay? 12 and 13. Okay. And maybe before the quiz, I uh, will have you some exercise on factors and vector functions. Okay, any questions? Any question from here? And how about the midterm? Is it difficult for you? Difficult? Okay. I think some part uh, I already gave and I think maybe PA, but I'm not, I'm not sure whether he, he or she gave the question or not. I took some of the question from the textbook uh, and yeah, most of the question from the textbook. So do you think it's difficult or, or too difficult? Difficult or too difficult? Uh, Midterm should be difficult, but is it difficult or, or is it too difficult? The midterm, what do you think? Number two. <laughs> Number two, okay. Okay, I've checked like seventy percent of your score. Uh, from from those seventy percent, the average is around fifty nine, fifty nine to sixty. Yeah, but because uh, you see, each question has uh points, right? Have a uh, weighted point. Um. Because most of you didn't didn't write carefully for the biggest one, like the, there's a twelve and sixteen. Uh, most of you are failing in those questions. Okay. So if you can relate to any uh, any equations that you can think, I can give some points from there, like maybe three or four. But some of you just uh, maybe leave it blank, and I, I cannot give you point. So because it's it's a big uh, point, you can leave some equation there, and I can still give a point. And if the equations are really related to the questions, I can give more more points. Okay. But when you leave it blank, I, I cannot justify any points there. Right? So yeah. Okay. But I think another another uh, reminder for you is because last uh, last midterm we have several equations related to calculus one, like how to integrate, right? Um, and derivative. Um, I think you need to. Some of you maybe didn't remember carefully how, how to do the calculus one. So you can review the calculus one because I think chapter uh, 13 and 14, we will still uh, 
at least have some relation with calculus one. Okay. Okay, let's uh, move to uh, chapter thirteen. So chapter 13, it's called vector functions. So as you are seeing here, uh, we will learn a functions in a perspective of a vector. Okay? Sometimes we are saying uh, vector value functions, or just a vector function is just OK. It has already defined. So what's vector functions? So we have a, a domain and we have range, right? To make the definition clear, let's just settle the domain and range. Okay? So domain is set of a real number. So any real number, okay? And the range is a factor. So or maybe set of factors or clear. So we are usually write in terms of R. So vector functions are So this is a unique vector in 3D space and usually denote by R and then with variable t. So functions R of t or factor functions of R uh, with t as variables. And then we define that if the we have another functions, let's say f and then g and then h, this tree are components of R. Then we can write then or we can write in in us in the basis vector i j and k or if you want because this is actually a vector you can write in terms of like using arrow like that that is also correct because r is is a vector so or r is also fine, or r is also fine. But whenever I'm writing just r in this chapter 13, hopefully you will you you understand that this r is meaning the, the factor function. Okay. And because we have these three components, how to find domain is we are basically depending on those three functions. Okay? So if this is having a random function, you can check one by one and you can look up the domain. Okay? How is the interval will be?
Okay, that's the intro. And I will uh, directly go to um, limits and continuity. So basically, in chapter 13, all the things in calculus one, we will go to deal with that. So limit of a factor, uh, factor function R is by definition is defined by taking limits of its component component functions so if let's define this in f g and h then limit let's say as uh, the t approach a uh, of the factor functions are it's the same as limit of each component So every limit or factor function means you are limiting the component functions inside. So what does it mean? Uh, So you can um, calculate or evaluate each component, for example, component X, Y, and Z separately, and then you can put back into the original uh, vectors. And this should be provided the limit uh, axis. So all the uh, the limit concept you learn, uh, you, you can apply here. Okay. And uh, vector functions. Function R is continuing at A if the limit okay is equal the point the value at a okay the value of r at a okay remember that so if you learned and let's take a review a little bit so if in limit uh, basically, all the curves that we can draw easily, they are all continuous, right? But sometimes we can have some parts that either it has the, for example, the asymptote that make it not continue, or you can have maybe some hole in a point, right? The discontinuity, right? But a limit, if you find, for example, here, you have hole here. You find limit from right, and you find limit from left. Both are going to the same directions, right? Going to this hole. And by concept limit, you, is limit axis, right? Limit axis. 
but not continue. Remember that, okay? So to make it continue, at the very exact point A, the vector should be the same as its value at A, okay? Just uh, review for from calculus one. This is just calculus one review. So meaning, because this is the vector, the vector functions, you need to apply in each x, y, z, okay, each, co each component. Okay. This is also you need to apply a into each component f, g, h, or, or x, y, z. Okay. okay. So that's the limit and continuity. A little bit uh, review from uh, your calculus one. Okay. So limits and continuity. Any question from here? I think it should be not too complicated. Okay. Okay. The other part is. It's called the space curve. Uh, let's say we have uh, f, g, and h. Uh, suppose uh, we have function f, function g, and h. Uh, all the Function here is continuous uh, real function. On some interval i. <coughs> and then set of C, C usually for a curve, right, for a curve. So set of C of all points where the x is function of t, y is the functions g t, and z are h t, okay? And T varies. T is uh, usually it's, it's the parametric variables, and T varies through interval i. It's some interval, okay? It's some interval means. So all of this is the C is called the space curve. And this part is the parametric equations. The parametric of C. And T itself is the parametric or the, the, the parameter. Now, how to uh, to imagine this this uh, the curve. Now, if you are looking at this all the parametric here, okay, which means as we move the curve, like uh, like we change t, maybe maybe from negative one. 0, 1, or maybe from one, uh, from 0, 1 to 3, depends on the curve. All this x, y, z will be changing, right? So meaning, at certain point, we can pinpoint our positions, okay? So for example, okay, I will uh, draw 
a random curve. Let's say we have C like that. And because it's moving every uh, every T, we we need to indicate the curve with arrow. Okay. And I say this is the origin. And at this point here, uh, let's say this is point P. Uh, we can set up uh, a coordinate, okay? Depends on T. Okay, now how we are going to observe this is now you have the, the green one is the, the curve, the C. And the blue one is our uh, position, okay? So every time the C is moving along the our equations, the position will change, okay? So it, it means that this is maybe t equals zero, or maybe this is t equal one, and maybe this is t equals something here, okay? So this is how we are look like, looking the, uh, the, the curve, okay? So we are pinpointing the, the, the curve, we are tracing each vector position, okay? So this p means the position. It's, it's not a vector, see? It's the coordinate of the system. And we can write the factor here. Okay. Okay, so we can have um a movement from any curve that we can think maybe a circle we can move a circle and it make a spiral or maybe we can have um like a parabola curve okay it, it can be uh happening there uh let's take the, the circle one okay so example Okay, how to sketch this R? Okay, so first we have uh, X component is cosine T, the parametric for X, parametric for Y, sine, and parametric for Z is just a T, okay? Now we can look at this as parametric equation for x, parametric equation for y, and parametric equation for t. Okay, if we look, uh, we look at this x and y, we can write down as a circle. Uh, 
a circle with a radius one. So probably on XY plane, we will have a circle all around the, the, the axis. Maybe this is the, the circle here. Because it will stay the same equations if you change any t, 0, 1, 2, 3, because it's always be 1. So it's, it's always be a circle. Okay? It's always be a circle. Okay? The one are, that changing is c. Okay? So it's like a cylinder. But the problem now, how the, the curve looks like. Okay? Now, the problem here, we need to make um, The first positions, let's say we can uh, let's say we start from because it has cos and sine, then maybe we can choose T that has um, angular, okay, that has angle, maybe. Uh, we can take special value from trigonometry and maybe take this as one zero zero. And then uh, this is T equal zero. Maybe we can take T equal a pi over two. So if t equals zero, cos zero is one, sine zero is zero, zero, right? So this is t equals zero. If you look at t pi over two, then it will be zero, and then one, and then pi over two. So this is the one that we are going to make. So x is 0, uh, y is 1, maybe y here, and goes up a little bit pi over 2. So maybe pi over 2 are uh, going up or around that. And you, you can do this for pi, uh, 3 over 2 pi, and you will see that it will be uh, I make the, the city little like that. So it will be it will be like a spiral. Okay. It will be like a spiral. From here, going here, going here. Yeah, but yeah, don't mind the proportions here, but you can see it will be a spiral. Okay. You can check uh, from t0, pi over 2, and check uh, according to x and y. Okay. So it will be uh, a helix. So the curve is a helix.
Okay, uh, let's go to another example. Okay, find a vector function. That represents the curve of intersection of the cylinder and plane So I hope you remember that the term cylinder in the surface is used for, uh, we have a equation circle here and we have Z, right? We have Z. And the, the plane here means uh, you have line equation on YZ, right? line equation but in x it will be infinite like the plane will will cut the cylinder okay so if you uh, try to imagine the the drawing So if we draw this, uh, this is the the cylinder, okay. and 
the y plus z plane is actually a, a line that connecting z and y, right? So if you look at So this is the line, right? So which means you will have So more likely you you have a like a a cut using this plane cutting the the cylinder that, that that's the situations and imagine you have a what kind of shape is that but maybe a sausage <laughs> maybe maybe you cut, you cut here and you will see it's like an ellipse right if you have like sausages, try to cut like a yeah, it will be like ellipse. Can you imagine that? Okay, so it will be like an ellipse. So it will be yeah, like that, an ellipse. But in terms of calculation, what you need to do is just first. The cylinder is basically the same cos t and sin t, okay? And the z is came from our plane. It's two minus y, right? And to connect this two, we just replace y with this. Okay. So z is actually two minus sin t. So the equations for the vector, for the vector functions is and let's say it's from zero to two pi. This is called, uh, this equation is called, or this method is called uh, parametrizations of curve C. So the, the part here, the introductions is just showing you uh, some part of the surface you learn in the vectors, the 3D space, how you are using the vectors and so on, and how we are going to make uh, vector functions from any surface that we have learned, okay? Okay, giving you uh, maybe another example. Um, So find parametric equations 
for curve of the intersection of a paraboloid and plane y equal x. If this is just the case, uh, you're, what you're going to do is just find the uh, parameter equation. But let's just um, try to, to sketch and um, observe what we what we are going to uh, to to calculate. Okay. So first, we have paraboloid. This one. If you are trying to make it in uh, x squared divided by four is equal y. Or I think uh, the first one is already this one already, I hope it's already clear. Okay. So if you put uh, x squared equal 4y and z squared equal 4y, so you have this parable. If we are trying to, to sketch, this will be. Let's say because the one that has linear is y, so that be, will, will be our axis in parabola, in the paraboloid. So let's say that's the first parabola. Okay, that's the paraboloid. And y equal x is here. Crossing the parabola, right? And we can make out the plane like that. So imagine something like a bowl or cup, and you, you you slice. Yeah, yeah, with a knife. But I don't know how you cut the cup with a knife. Yeah. Uh, however, anyway, it will be. Uh, so this is the, the cutting, right? Okay, because it has a, it's as it has a, a curve, right? In in, in a, every point in in the cup. So if you slice, as it will be something uh, like an ellipse or maybe a circle, right? Like, like an ellipse. Okay, anyway, uh, we can make out the, the substitution here. So first is we have y equal x. 
So let's just substitute x with y, uh, with, uh, x to dy. And uh, what we are going to do is we can complete the square. So minus 4x plus 4, so it should be 4. So we have a circular cylinder. So in XZ plane, in XZ plane, so from example before, we can write maybe here. Can write the x is I write this and y is same. And Z is two sine D and zero. Okay. It's from the chapter ten, the parametric. Uh, let me give you, remember this, okay? And this is, means uh, R is two, right? And center is two zero zero. Okay, if I just write this, do you understand? Why I'm writing this? Do you get it? Uh, you are changing the with the um, r cos theta, uh, r sine theta. Okay. We have the r is two, and we are doing the the squared here. Uh, remember that the squared. Okay, you can try yourself. Okay, I hope I hope you get it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, because uh, we don't have much time left, uh, so I will stop here. For uh, this is uh, thirteen point one. I, I will come back later for just uh, some reviewing. So we only have uh, thirteen point two and thirteen point three left. I will skip the 13.4 because that's mostly about physics. And then finish the 13. So two more. Maybe next week we will finish chapter 13. Um, next two weeks I will review and probably having a quiz. Okay, probably, probably. If we finish on time, if we finish on time. If not, maybe maybe next, next another week.
but we can discuss later. And also, uh, because I received the announcement of how the uh, the lecture uh, should be, uh, because we can have we we can have options to to take uh, online courses if you want. Okay, but I think as long as uh, there's no other news, right? No 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 recent news about the situation now. So we can uh, just go to the class. Okay. So if there's anything happen, uh, just let me know and we can have the uh, online class. Okay. If any, any if anything happened. Okay. So, so let me know if, if you, if you guys have any news or a problem, uh, just give me an email or maybe send me message through the model system. Okay. Okay. I, I think that's it for now and uh, we'll continue next week and hopefully I can give you the results for your midterm next week.